Okay, friends. Now let us talk about uh, different types of microscopy. It is called the differential interference microscopy, or better known as DIC. Uh, so what is differential interference microscope and what why we use this microscopy over normal light microscopy so again this is a, a type of light microscopy because in this case we are using common light to illuminate our sample so it is a basic modification of um, normal uh, light microscopy but what what is differing in this microscopy is uh, the mm, we can find in this component system so if you look at the light path of this uh, microscopy of this DIC microscope what we can find here, uh, here we can have uh, the normal light source which is the beginning. Now let me take a color and here it is. So now let us compare uh, this microscopic setup with uh, our normal uh, light microscopy. This is the light source. So this is the source of light. So from this source light is coming and it will enter into that. Right after the source what we have in normal microscope we have the condenser. Condenser condenses the light to the specimen uh, slide. But in this case right after the light source we are not having the condenser. Uh, so between the path of light source and condenser we have two ingredients. One is the polarizer. Remember we can find this polarizer in polarizing microscopy where you need this polarizer to create uh, um, the polarized light from uh, this non-polarized light which is having uh, the vectors oscillating in different directions and when it travels through the polarizer all the different oscillations are cut out only one type of electron vibration is selected and uh, so we have a very very uh, less uh, intense uh, light which is passing after the polarizer. So again in this case the polarizer activity is the same so we are cutting out all the undesired oscillation of electro, uh, electric vectors. We are having only one type of oscillation of electric vectors selected by using a kind of polarizer and light travels. After that we have a, conde uh, we have a condense, uh, condenser. Uh, this is not a conventional condenser. It is called a Nomarsky prism or Ulastone prism. So what do we mean by this Ulaston prism? This is a kind of dense, uh, densely uh, made by glass uh, structure. In this structure it is having, uh, you can see here uh, clearly that uh, it, it is having an anisotropic substancing layer like that and in this layer you can find uh, this kind of division, uh, this kind of long, uh, the lateral division like that. This kind of uh, varying in density in this Ulaston prism uh, gives a characteristic to, to this prism that this, this prism can divide the polarized light into two separate beams. Okay, So whenever uh, we are cutting out all those electric vectors except one uh, electric vector oscillation that polarized light enters into this Ulaston prism it will be different it, uh, it will be divided into two s different segments. Uh, you can see here two different beams. So it is separating this uh, polarized light into two separate beams and right after separating uh, it out into two separate beam it will finally encounter the condenser and as we know the condenser effect is to condense light into the specimen so again condenser is uh, condensing the light into the specimen and here we have after condensing the light what happens in this case here is our specimen normally resides here Okay, so now let us think if there is no specimen, only a blank slide in this place. So what happened without a specimen? So what happens this light right after passing the condenser, light beams will pass through the slide. They will not interact with each other and they will not diffracted by any substances because there are no substance present in the slide. So this light will pass through the slide and then finally it will enter the objective and finally go through the objective, passes through the objective and through uh, the Ulaston Nomarsky prism again. So we are not only placing Ulaston prism in between the polarizer and condenser and we are also uh, uh, placing this Ulaston prism right after the objective and, and in between objective and eyepiece. Why we need to put this second Ulaston prism here? So this is the first Ulaston prism, this is the second Ulaston prism. Why we need to put this prism in the second place? Because remember when the polarized light passes through the first Ulaston prism it is divided, it is divided into two separate light beams. So we are creating two beams, it is not enough. So we need uh, to know whether a specimen is present there or not. We need to know the structure of the specimen. The, more importantly the size and shape, more importantly I am emphasizing it, the shape of the specimen. 
because shape is really good identification using this DIC microscopy. So if there is no specimen, they will in won't interact, no diffraction is done, so we need to gather these light beams again. So if you use another Ulaston prism here, so they will take, uh, this Ulaston prism will take this, uh, these two beams and uh, reincorporate these two beams together to finally make another beam, a single beam, and that beam will pass through an, an analyzer. Okay, so it, it will pass to an analyzer because remember we have put a polarizer in the previous step. So uh, according to the principle of polarization microscopy, so if we put a polarizer in this uh, having a slit uh, lat uh, perpendicular uh, laterally, uh, then we must have another uh, horizontally like that. So in, in perpendicular to each other to eliminate the cut or cut off extra rays which are passing. So we're using an analyzer here in this place which will cut out the rays which are oscillating uh, via this polarizer in, in a particular orientation. Then it will cut all this different orientation and select the other light beams which will pass uh, via different types of oscillations in this case. Okay, so right after passing through this analyzer, uh, this uh, uh, light beam, uh, all the other light beam which are being oscillating in the same way. If the if there is no specimen, what happens? Uh, this all the light beams which are passing through this uh, blank slide and via this objective and finally via, uh, from this Ulaston will be uh, excluded via this analyzer and no light. Uh, will pass through this analyzer finally or if it passes through then very very fine amount of light will pass through that will not create any image so what we s what we'll see a dark background or a darker background like this so only a background like this so we can find this kind of background image without any specimen okay but if we put a specimen here for instance if we put a cell culture of yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae so if we put this uh, cell specimen, what happens when this light beam will pass through this place, suppose there is a specimen range, if it passes through this slide, what happens, this, uh, this uh, specimen will diffract some amount of light beam uh, and both of the light beam will diffract it in, in a way. So what happens as uh, it, is, uh, it was in previous time is in phase or something like that, it will slightly change the phase uh, transition in this stage. So the di diffraction will be changed. So they will interfere with each other and this interference will generate uh, different types of light beam finally when this beam passes through the second stone because the second stone will gather all these lights together. So when they gather this kind of light beam together, what happens? This analyzer will not be able to block those lights because analyzer will block light only with one directional uh, light beam which, uh, ha which are having only one type of electric vector uh, oscillation. So if suppose if uh, if here is the polarizer so again after right after the spe uh, the, the l uh, light uh, beam travels a specimen you have the analyzer it will passes through the only this kind of light will pass through and finally what we have an analyzer like that all these beams will be blocked in the previous case where we do not have any sample we don't have any specimen but if we have a specimen then the specimen will, will change uh, the, um, this type of light beam into something else and those, those type of light oscillation can pass us through the analyzer and we can see it with our eye. This is a very bad drawing of an eye <laughs> but we still can see uh, this light beam. So by looking at this light beam what we can look uh, uh, in this picture is something like that. So in the yeast cells, the yeast cells will look something like that. Now, one thing you should look at this picture is uh, that th these pictures are not a two-dimensional anymore. We can have a three-dimensional effect on the picture. Did we are re uh, really, uh, uh, does we are really creating uh, any kind of uh, 3D image here? No, my answer is exactly no. We are making a 2D image, but still it is making an effect just it, it looks like a 3D. So this is a pseudo 3D effect we are creating using DIC microscopy. That's why this DIC microscopies are being used because we can use this DIC microscopy to il illuminate our sample in such a way uh, that we can see them as pseudo 3D images and that really helps us sometimes to look at the shape of this molly, uh, shape of the proteins, uh, uh, not protein, shape of the cells or shape of the specimens and as well as we need to look at this nucleus or different surface structure of this uh, 
uh, of our samples now why we create this kind of pseudo 3d image how when why these images are creating because of oblique illumination that we are doing so in the previous cases of light microscopy what we are doing we are always illuminating our specimen so if you have a specimen like that we are illuminating the specimen in a direct way uh, like that but in this case we are illuminating our specimen so let me change the color here we are illuminating our specimen obliquely that means the specimen light passes through the specimen obliquely rather than the straight line okay so this oblique illumination makes a tail like structure comet tail like structure that gen that is generated in these cases that tail that that <laughs> assume us that the picture we are looking at is uh, 3d but it is not exactly this is a pseudo 3d effect okay and that's why we are using dic microscopy and these microscopies can be widely used to study the shape of the shape of the molecule actually we can see uh, this kind of microscopy is an extension of uh, polarizing microscopy as well as uh, the phase uh, contrast microscopy together okay so because uh, as we can see here we have uh, the polarized anal analyzer which we can see in the polarizing microscopy and we also have this ulaston prism uh, as in phase contrast microscopy where we use those annulus plate and all this so this prism by using the prism along with polarizer analyzer concept we can actually combine those two microscopies together and finally can make something gorgeous uh, to make pictures gorgeous like this okay so that's it and I hope that's going to help you.